Welcome back to Wheeler Scientific. Today we are making an important toxic chemical. If you've taken an organic chemistry class, you know it can be also called how to draw hexagons, thanks to our friend benzene. The benzene ring is synonymous with organic chemistry, and today we'll make some benzene. It stands in a fantastic starting point for building other organic molecules, and that's the plan. In a previous video, I produced benzoic acid from tiling. Benzoic acid will serve as our starting point. The chemicals needed for this reaction are sodium hydroxide, benzoic acid, and some kind of drying media, such as molecular sieves or anhydrous sodium sulfate. I place 10 grams of sodium hydroxide and 25 milliliters of water into an evaporating dish, using a hot plate as a heat source. The sodium hydroxide is stirred in until wholly dissolved. Twelve grams of benzoic acid is then gradually added to the mix. Water is added as needed to ensure a complete dissolving of the benzoic acid. The reaction occurring here is converting the benzoic acid to sodium benzoate. The sodium hydroxide is in excess, which is important for the next step. The sodium hydroxide dissolving also allows for a complete mix of chemicals, allowing an even reaction in the next step. Heating continues till no water is left and all is a dry mass. During this time, constant stirring is done to prevent sticking in the dish. The sodium benzoate and sodium hydroxide mix is then placed in a drying oven to drive off any leftover water. Once dry and cool, the sodium benzoate and hydroxide are ground to a powder in a mortar and pestle. The dry powdered benzoate and hydroxide are then transferred to the flask. Generally, the next step is done in a metal reactor due to sodium hydroxide in its molten state being able to dissolve glass, but I'll use a junky flask as the reaction vessel so you can see into the reaction vessel. Adding calcium oxide can also lower the reaction between the glass and sodium hydroxide, allowing use of glass. The flask is connected to a distillation setup to collect the vapors produced. How the flask is connected is a bit weird but it'll keep any water from rolling back into the reaction vessel and causing it to crack. Lab glassware is quite thermally resistant, but a sudden shock by rapid cooling can cause an explosive crack to occur. The reaction flask is heated with a Bunsen burner using continuous motion to ensure all material reacts. I made sure to avoid heating the condenser to keep it from cracking. Ground glass joints do not handle uneven heat very well. Smoke slowly fills the glassware, and soon benzene condenses and rolls down. I do not know if it's just me, but this reaction is quite beautiful. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base, and heating with benzoate causes a reaction known as decarboxylation, which removes a carboxylate group, forming an anion of benzene, which is then protonated, forming benzene. Water is also formed as a side product in the reaction. A decarboxylation reaction falls into the group of dry distillation, in which solid materials produce a gaseous product. The reaction is heated till no more liquid comes over. The dirty liquid is then transferred to a separatory funnel to separate the water from the benzene. The benzene has a density of 0.88 grams per milliliter, so it's our top layer. We drain the water into a flask and the benzene into another. This step also serves to remove any water-soluble impurities. At this point, our product is quite dirty and gross. We can run another distillation to clean it up. 
Loading a flask with the crude, we can start a distillation. Only product that comes over at 80 degrees Celsius is kept. Anything outside that temperature will be impurities from the crude. High temperature reactions such as decarboxylation are known for producing many byproducts, hence why the cleanup steps are needed. The benzene coming over is a bit cloudy. This is most likely due to water as an impurity. The reaction is heated till no more benzene comes over. I then took off the flask and added a few molecular sieves to dry it out. This removed any of the cloudiness that was left over. The now dry benzene is transferred to a teared vial. The yield is 4.277 grams, a 55% yield. Low yields such as this are common for this reaction style. It produces many byproducts instead of pure product. I could squeeze a few more percent by increasing heat and adding more sodium hydroxide for a longer period. I didn't want to completely distill the crude also, so some benzene was left. I didn't do this due to contamination concerns. This reaction is definitely scalable and would work well if one needed benzene, although if I was to do this for actual production, I would use a metal reaction vessel. Using glassware is not safe nor practical in any larger quantities. I ran a hydrogen NMR to test our compound, showing a clean product with data that we would expect from benzene. Now it's time to build off this benzene ring and see what other compounds can be made. Thanks for watching, and if you have any comments or questions, post those in the comments section below. If you want to support the channel, check out the Patreon link in the description. If you just want to discuss science with me, check out the Discord link in the description as well. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.